Hey everybody, Tim Brzezinski here. In this screencast, we are going to build a model of this bowl, the cereal bowl, also showing that picture right there, right, within GeoGebra's 3D calculator. This is an activity in which, through which we can engage Algebra 1 and Geometry students with modeling, even calculus students, right, when they have to find the volume of a solid of revolution, right, who's whatever, you know what I mean? So this is something that we can use in several curricula here. I'm going to show you how to build it quickly in GeoGebra 3D calculator. Uh, so again, here we have the cereal bowl. Now again, with students and problem solving, I like to focus a lot on initial setups at first, before we even begin the shenanigans of just actually building the thing. The question is, now granted you see the picture here, let me just hide it for a second, but where in space would I want to put this particular bowl, right? Now again, students love to tend to like maximizing the number of times zero is seen as a vertex, or as a, a coordinate, I should say, my bad. But right here, if you look at it this way, the way I'm holding it here, right, I'm going to put zero, zero, zero right here where that, where that dot is right there. See, the bottom of the bowl here is that smaller circle right there. So there's the little radius. I measured that. That was four and a half centimeters. Okay. Now, the height of this bowl, technically frustum of a cone, right, the height for the distance between these two bases here is seven and one tenth centimeters. And interestingly enough, the radius of this outer circle here, is also seven and one tenth centimeters. So again, let's just focus on the coordinate plane. We're going to look at what we call a cross section here. So right here, right, um, zero zero. What would the coordinates of these two points, ordered pairs, be? Now this is a great, you know, exercise in spatial reasoning for students in algebra with respect to plotting points, right? So keeping that data right there in front of us, if I put that on the screen there, but let's actually take a peek and see what this could look like here. Okay, so now I'm going to take this, uh, let me take this out, okay, and move it like so, I cover myself here, and just so we can have the data right in front of us, so it'll make life a lot easier. So there we go there, I'll move this over just a wee bit, beautiful, okay, so now that outer radius, in fact, here's GeoGebra's 3D uh, calculator here, you know what, we have an X, a Y, and a Z axis, but I'm going to right click, and I'm going to go to settings, okay and i'm going to choose to hide the z-axis go over to the z-axis tab and we can actually hide it because the reality is let me just exit out of here uh, excuse me right because honestly the reality is we don't really need that we just need to be in the coordinate plane and i can position myself and this is kind of how i'm used to looking at it right here see what i mean it's all there so now what would the order what would the what would the coordinates be of this point right over here well four and a half up wouldn't it be I could plot uh, here, let me see here, I could plot 0, 0, 0, that's right there. Again, we're on, the, we're on the coordinate plane where z is always 0, right? But for the next point right there, wouldn't it be uh, this point right up here? I would think most students would venture to say that that's really 0, 4 and a half, 0. Kind of like that. Let me zoom out just a little bit. Okay. And uh, what about this ordered pair right here? Oh, 7.1 units down the x-axis? Yeah, Mr. B, I got this. So he said, okay, so here we have 7.100. 0, 0. And then last but not least, uh, what, what would this one be? Well, over 7 and 1 tenths, up 7 and 1 tenths. So therefore, would it be that? Right there, right? And so now here's where I could switch gears and with respect to what curriculum I'm in, my students are in. You see, if I'm working just purely from like, say, a middle school geometry perspective, Go to tools. I could actually just simply plot the segment here, B to D, and then spin B, D, spin segment BD about the x-axis to make my surface of revolution, right? That is very easy to do. In fact, we did that last screencast that I posted yesterday, but I'll put the link in, in the description below uh, down there in, in, in a minute. But right here, let's undo what we just did. Let's actually think more along the lines of an algebra one, right? I want to come up with a function a piecewise function, or, or a, a function with restricted domain, I should say, linear function that goes through B and D. Starts at B, ends at D. So I guess the logic is, well, G, you know, what would I, um, what would it be here? Well, I could say, for example, the way you type a piecewise function is like this, f of x equals x, zero less than x less than three. Well, that's definitely not it, right? Well, let's see here. Doesn't the y-intercept have to be what the y-intercept, where that crosses there? Well, doesn't it have to be four and a half? Yeah. But now what do we need? We need the slope, right? And so now I can actually put the slope here, but I'm too lazy to actually do the math here. So I'm just going to simply put, hey, wouldn't it just be 7.1 minus 
uh, 7.1 minus 4.5, right? This minus that, minus 4.5, all over, right? See that minus that over that minus that, so 7.1 minus 0. And now, y intercept there, but let's actually see what we have here. 0 less than x less than, well, it's got to be whatever the x coordinate of d is, right? So there, that would be, I would think, 7 and 1 tenth. And let's zoom out and see how it looks. Nice. We got it. You see, the thing is, most students really don't care about restricting domains of functions, but when it comes to creating something artistically like this, it makes sense. All right. And so now here's what we do. We can look at it from this perspective here. And now I just simply, I'm going to make a slider called uh, spin. I'll type spin equals zero. And I'm going to come right in here and I'm going to change the parameters here from zero degrees to 360 degrees and I'll step it by one degree to show the smooth uh, spinning there. Yes, GeoGebra defaults to radians, but so what? Point is we want we want to form a surface of revolution by spinning that function BD from B to D all around the um, the X axis. So the way I do it is just simply say, hey, GeoGebra, I want you to make a surface now. Take function F, spin it that many degrees, please. Again, don't worry about that stuff about the x-axis you got to specify the axis of rotation and voila look at that check it out check it out baby there it is okay and that is the bowl hopefully that i see right over here but now we're going to quickly throw this in augmented reality and test our virtual model by superimposing it on the real okay so let's actually save it i'll show you how we do it again um right here all i'm going to do is go here to file and I'll hit, uh, actually, before I do that, let me just make the color here a little lighter. Right click, settings, and I'm going to make it a little more uh, turquoisey blue. And I'll kind of put it the opacity way up there. All right, before we save it. And there it is. Actually, you know what? The, the, blow, the bowl is blue, so let me just make it more of a pinkish color. That might be better to contrast. I don't know. And for style, let me make the line thickness zero, because sometimes I don't like those lines that they put there by default. And that's okay. To each is her own. But there you go. There's the bowl. And now let's actually save it. So what we do before we open it on our phone is we got to save. We got to be logged into GeoGebra. Go to File and Save. And I'm going to call it uh, Bowl Screencast. Something like that. Shared with link is fine. Hit Save. Down here it says Saving, Saving. And give it a second. Save successfully. Beautiful. Now what do we do? We close this out. Okay. Now we go back up here to uh sorry we go we go back up here to uh let's make this wider a little bit we got to go back to our geogebra profile and so that would be right over here for me geogebra's home page go to profile and now you want to go to uh, your profile there the latest thing you'll see is where it says bowl screencast see where it right there i'm going to click on it and again this is a view only thing but the only thing that i need out of this mess is right here see that eight digit url right there that eight digit url i'm going to copy it w6aay that is the that's the the id of it if you will identification so i'm just going to make that bigger in google docs so you can see it and so if you want to go ahead and open up your phone uh while you're watching this feel free let me make this big here so you can see it all so what i'm going to do now is take myself off and i'm going to open up geogebra's 3d app right there there it is. So what I want to do now is go to uh, the horizontal bars right up here. It's the menu. One second. There we go. I'll go up here and I'm going to go to search. I think on an Android, it's like uh, font uh, open, right? It doesn't matter. Again, that, that is case sensitive. That can't be a little W there. All right. But now let's actually type it in. W six A A Y two three D there it is I like doing it this way because it's the only one that it's the only one that'll show up so you don't have to search through eight million of them you know what I mean that may have the same kind of titles with bowl or something so we touch on it and what I just made literally I'm gonna zoom out my fingers here see guys what we just literally made right here we are now opening on our phone right there and so let's actually now let's actually throw this in augmented reality by touching AR We'll put this to the test, right? Aim it to the floor, tap anywhere on the screen. And again, just go, just be gentle with it. 
All right, and you'll see there, again, try to touch around C and D so we don't move them, say. And there you go. If I click on the settings gear right here, see where that gear is right there? I'm going to hide, I'm going to choose to uh, hide the plane and the axes because I know I built it, but I just want to make as clean of an image as I can, if you will. But now here's where augmented reality comes into play. The power of that is see now we can actually test our virtual models by superimposing them over the real. And look at this. Here we go. Let me actually stand up a little bit so you can see it. Now it does fit pretty well, but just to show you even better, if I actually touch the ball, go to the three horizontal dots there. Uh, actually, I touched the function. Hang on. Let me go back here uh, to where it says surface. See, I'm going to touch these dots right here. Go to settings. And I'm going to make the opacity much lighter so I can actually see through it. I probably should have did that when I was on the computer, but that's okay. And so now, here we could, here we could see the ball through it better. You know what I mean? But now I take that. Here we go. And now this is what your students could be recording in their screencast there, right? And so you can see how well the, the, the virtual fits over the real. I would say that's like pretty good if I was a teacher, you know. But there you go. So what could you do? What are the implications here? Well, why not bring some bowls to class? Have your students take a day to model with linear functions. Have them model the cross-section. See what I mean? We could spin. We can mess around in augmented reality just like that. We can dive in it. We can go through it like so. Woo! Three space right there. See what I mean? Possibilities are endless here to what you could do with uh, with this app. So um, again, I made this video in response to several of you who were uh, kind of asking me about it. So doing a lot of how-tos this week in GeoGebra 3D. Again, see how an activity like this, we could do an Algebra 1 to you know work with linear functions and then wow, that linear function is the cross-section. But from a geometry perspective, we are emphasizing what a cross-section actually is right and calculus students you know what you could just simply be finding you know what those volumes of solids that are in those textbooks what the heck does that look like this app helps you see that so much better so that's it i'm tim brzezinski thanks for watching if you like what you see feel free to hit the subscribe button a lot more coming later on this week and have a great day